I'm writing a report about Washington, D.C. Last week, Mom had to go there for work. My teacher said a visit there is like studying history, geography, and government all at the same time. So I got to go, too. Just flying into Washington, I could tell there was something special about the city. Over 200 years ago, the states of Virginia and Maryland each gave up a little land along the Potomac River for our nation's capital. The northern states wanted the capital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where the Declaration of Independence was signed. The southern states were afraid of having the capital in the north. They thought that would give the northern states too much power. But the land given to the country by Maryland and Virginia was halfway between the northern and southern states. So Washington isn't part of any state. It's a district. George Washington, our first president, named it the District of Columbia, D.C. after Christopher Columbus. Just like the city is named after him, George Washington. Many people worked together to plan the city. Benjamin Banneker and Andrew Ellicott made maps of the land. President Washington asked a Frenchman, Pierre L'Enfant, to plan the city. He decided where to put the streets and roads. Everything was centered around the Capitol. That's why Mom and I started our tour at the Capitol building. There you are. Oh. Mom, does Capitol end with A-L or O-L? Both. It depends on how it's used. The Capitol A-L is the city. The Capitol O-L is the building. The Capitol is beautiful. Many artists recorded the important events and people in paintings and sculptures you see everywhere in the Capitol. The round part of the building in the center is called the rotunda. The dome of the Capitol is made of cast iron that shines in the sun outside. Inside are beautiful paintings and carvings about important events in the history of our country. You can even stand next to statues of past presidents on the floor of the rotunda. This rotunda connects the other two sections, or wings, of the Capitol building. This is where the elected representatives of the people from all the states make laws and carry on the business of government. Some representatives are a part of the House of Representatives. The other representatives are called Senators. Together, they are called the Congress. If you used a tree to represent our government, this would be the first branch, the legislative branch. Legislative means about the laws. The second branch of government is the executive branch. We saw that represented on our second stop, the President's home, the White House. When Washington, D.C. became the capital of the United States, the people decided that the President needed a home there. It took eight years to finish. So in the year 1800, President Adams and his wife moved into the White House. Every president since then has lived there. Inside, you can see furniture and things that presidents bought for the White House more than 100 years ago. But it wasn't called the White House at first. Shortly after it was built, it was burnt down during the War of 1812. Only a portrait of George Washington was saved. After the war, the house was rebuilt and, of course, painted white. Visitors from all over the world tour the White House every day. The first rooms on the tour are the library, all filled with books by American authors. And the China Room, displaying China dishes and glasses used by the presidents. 
Up the stairs is my favorite room, the East Room. Before the room was completely finished, Abigail Adams strung laundry lines and hung her husband's laundry to dry here. She didn't feel it was right to have the president's laundry outside flapping in the wind. On the other side of the White House, in the state dining room, 130 people can sit down together for dinner at the same time. One of the most famous offices in the world is here, the President's Oval Office. It really is shaped like an oval, and it's famous because this is where the President works. If the President is unable to do his work, the Vice President carries on. Like a person that runs a business is called an executive. Together, the President and the Vice President represent the executive branch of the government. Elizabeth, is somebody in here? Are you on the phone or working on your report? My report, Mom. Why don't you read what I have so far on the Supreme Court? Okay. The Supreme Court represents the third branch of our government, the judicial branch. They meet in the Supreme Court building. Special judges called Supreme Court justices are appointed by the President to be the final say on our laws. It's the highest court in the United States. That means that the judges here decide together if the decisions made by judges in other courts were right. They are also special guardians of the Constitution. They decide whether a new law agrees with the Constitution. The Constitution is the document that is the basis for many of the laws in the United States. These Supreme Court justices are appointed for life. Some of the most famous are Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman justice. In 1967, Thurgood Marshall became the first African-American Supreme Court justice. Another famous justice was William Howard Taft. He was the president from 1909 to 1913. And then, later, he was the chief justice, the head judge of the Supreme Court. The three branches of the government, the legislative branch with the House of Representatives and the Senate, the executive branch with the president and vice president, and the judicial branch with the Supreme Court, work together to govern our nation. This looks great, Elizabeth. Thanks. The next section I call the four M's. The mall, monuments, memorials, and museums. Getting around in Washington, D.C. was easy and exciting. They have underground transportation to all the important sites. It's called the Metro. The Metro map was so easy to read. We used it to get to the mall. This isn't a shopping mall, but a huge park-like grassy area that's surrounded by important government buildings like the Capitol. From the metro station, we walk to the Washington Monument. A monument is something special built to honor an important person. George Washington, our first president, was so important, he's often called the father of our country. The monument is 555 feet tall. An elevator took us up to the top, but we climbed down 897 steps to the bottom. In the early 1800s, people donated money to build the memorial until the Civil War started. Then it sat unfinished for 30 years. The top is made of marble from a different quarry. That's why it looks like a different color. The reflecting pool is close by and shaped like the Washington Monument. It's a great place to picnic and think and dream, and if you stand near the Lincoln Memorial, you can see the Washington Monument reflected in the pool. Many special memorials are in the mall. Some are built to help us remember the people who died serving our country during wars. The Vietnam War Memorial is important to me because my uncle died during that war. We saw his name listed among the 50,000 people remembered on the polished black granite wall. They all died while serving the United States in the Vietnam War. You know, Elizabeth, we're lucky. We know what happened to your uncle. But there are some people who died serving our country that are unknown. We don't know their names, nor where they're buried. So how do we remember them? They're remembered at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Remember we saw that? At Arlington National Cemetery. Every day, soldiers stand guard at the tomb. 
And when the guard changes, all the visitors are quiet and respectfully remember what the unknown soldiers did for our country. Some of the most famous heroes of the United States are buried here in Arlington. John F. Kennedy, our 35th president, died serving our country. Mrs. Kennedy wanted her husband's grave marked with an eternal flame similar to that of the French unknown soldier in Paris. The flame never goes out, so we will always remember him. There is also a quote from his most famous speech written in stone. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. At the other end of the mall, across the water of the Tidal Basin, we visited the Jefferson Memorial. Thomas Jefferson was our third president. He was also a very good architect. His memorial was built to look like the Roman Pantheon, a famous ancient building he admired. It also looks a little like his own house, Monticello. But Thomas Jefferson is so important in our history because he wrote the Declaration of Independence. He wrote, We solemnly publish and declare that these colonies are, and of a right, ought to be free and independent states. Close by, the Lincoln Memorial was built to honor our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. When Lincoln was president, the United States had 36 states. There are 36 columns in the memorial and it's built in the style of a Greek temple. When Lincoln was elected president, most black people in the U.S. were enslaved. An enslaved person was owned by another person. He worked all the years he was president to free the slaves. In 1863, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation and declared all slaves were then, thenceforward, and forever free. On the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, many speeches for freedom have been given. Probably the most famous is when Dr. Martin Luther King spoke, I have a dream. I have a dream. That one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. The table of brotherhood. I have a dream. His life made such a difference to the people in the United States that we have a holiday honoring his birthday. Washington, D.C. certainly has a lot of our country's history, but right there on the mall we saw some of the most unusual things in the world, in museums. The Smithsonian Institute is probably the most famous museum in the world. Actually, the Smithsonian started as one museum, but now it is 13 separate museums. None of them are on the mall. The Dinosaur Hall in the National Museum of Natural History is too real. We walk through a model of Skylab in the National Air and Space Museum. My favorite stop was the Hands-On Museum. The four M's the mall, monuments, memorials, and museums honor and display the past. Washington, D.C. is a great place to learn about where we've been, who we are, and the type of people we should and can be. Anything else I should add, Mom? Oh, you've covered a lot. Uh, maybe just a quick recap about the branches of the government. The legislative branch that represents the people and makes the laws. The executive branch with president and vice president who see that the laws of the land are carried out, and the judicial branch, the final say on all the courts of our country, the judges who make sure that our laws go along with the Constitution of the United States. Mom, how about this for the end of my report? Besides the business of government, Washington, D.C. is a place to remember the people who made our country free and safe, to see where we've been, to discover who we are, and to dream of where we're going.